Howdy folks, John here from rchelicopterfun.com. Yeah, I finally did it. Blew the guts out of one of my iCharger 306Bs. This thing's had some pretty hard use over the past eight, nine years. Doesn't owe me a dime. It's been a great little charger, but seeing that I've uh, managed to let the magic smoke out of it, time for a replacement. As you can likely guess, I'm a bit of an iCharger fanboy. Anyone who's been on my website, on my RC battery charger page knows I highly recommend iCharger. They make really good RC battery chargers, but I also recommend ISDT chargers on that page. And I decided that is what I was gonna get to replace this 306B. It's got the same power range, so 1000 watts, maximum 30 amp charging capability. So it uh, is a perfect replacement for this. And if you too have been looking at the uh, ISDT Q8 Max, hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have a much better idea of its features, how it works, that type of thing. So let's get right into it. I wanna thank Banggood for sending me this neat little replacement charger. And as usual, I'll have product links below in the description. So you can check it out yourself and also link to the instruction manual so you can look at the specifications. As you can tell, they are quite small. So you get the manual. I'm just gonna hold up the specs real quick. You can check these out online, but uh, that's what's important to most people. And what do we get here? Little sticker set. Get a screen protector display, which is cool. And then the charger itself. And it's just amazing how small chargers are getting considering the amount of power they can output. You know, a thousand watt charger that basically is almost palm size. Incredible. Oh, I hate when that happens. Come on. Well, looks like we can't peel off the very scratched up. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, oh yes. Oh, Reflection City now. Bad idea, partner. Going over connectivity of the ISDT Q8 Max. Pretty simple. Power input on the left, output on the right. Just notice it's got these really nice grippy silicone feet on the bottom. Helps prevent it from sliding around and marking up your work surface. Voltage input range is 10 to 34 volts DC. So if you're out at the flying field, you could easily hook it up to your vehicle battery to uh, power it off of that. Or any 3S to 8S LiPo pack at home, you can power it off of a power supply. You'll notice it uses the XT60i connectors. The i connectors have this third little pin at the top. That's a uh, communication signal pin for the BatGo smart battery system. Not a fan myself. Hate being locked into proprietary technology that limits your choices. But uh, if you like the BatGo system, this is a true smart charger that supports it. For those of us who don't, the XT60Is also work with just standard XT60 plugs. No problem there. Next to the XT60i, we've got a USB input for flashing new firmware to the unit if you want to. And one of the neatest features I liked on this little charger is it's actually got a USB power output uh, rated at 5 volts, 2 amps. So if you're running it off of a battery, you know, you could charge uh, your phone, you could charge up uh, lots of RC radios now are using uh, USB power cords to charge them, or even little micro uh, pack chargers, the little USB chargers on little micro batteries. So that's a really handy little feature I really liked on this charger. On the power output side for actually charging the batteries, again, another XT60i. If you've got charge harnesses or paraboards with regular four millimeter bananas on them, you're gonna be stuck. I'm gonna have to build a converter or you can buy them. Of course, if you've got uh, charge harnesses or paraboards with XT60s already on them, no problem all there, you're covered. And the balance input, again, does up to 8S packs. So you've got uh, nine pins there. Uh, whether you plug in a board, a harness, or packs directly, just be mindful that the negative is right at the bottom here. 
So your plug is always going to have the negative at the bottom pin and then the cells in ascending order. Let's get this thing powered up. So I just made my powering harness out of the uh, wiring from my blown up 306B. Just soldered an XT60 plug on the end. So we can power this from the power supply. Zoom in here so we can see what's going on. Notice there's these little spots. I ended up having to put the uh, protective film on. I'll tell you right now, you look at this thing the wrong way and it will scratch the display. That's a big miss in my opinion. So when you get yours, either leave the shipping display protector on or if you remove it, put the good one on right away because uh, yeah, you just touch these buttons and it'll scratch the display. Just gonna show you the menus real quick before we start the charge cycle just to give you an idea of how you uh, navigate through everything. It's pretty intuitive. You've got an up and down selection, and then your enter selection. And if you hold the enter in, it'll take you into different menus as well. So there's just showing you system info. If we hold this in, it takes us to our system setting menu. And this is where you'd set your low voltage protection, your input power protection, your backlight level, your volume level. You can select when the charge cycle is completed if you want it to keep ringing or just do a, a ring once. Touch slide on or off. You can set different languages. Theme bright, dark, this is kind of cool. It's got this dark mode as well for low light conditions. It actually looks better in the camera with this. So I think we're gonna leave it in the dark settings here. Uh, keep trickle on it's for lead acid batteries. Self test. If you ever want to do a self test on the unit, it performs on, runs the fan, goes through all the system checks. Oh, so everything's passed. Good to see. And calibration, system information, and back. You can also go back just by holding in the enter button. And now we're back into our system info. Here's our main charge screen. So when you're charging a battery, this is what's going to show up. It's going to show the current, how much uh, capacity has gone back in the pack, the voltage, and then the voltage of all the specific cells. And then here's task setting or setting our actual charge information. So task. We've got several options here. We can either charge the battery, we can discharge it, storage charge it. DC power, this is kind of cool. You could use this as a power supply. So you can set a specific output voltage and specific current. This is a neat function, destroy. So this will actually put a load on a battery and take it right down to zero volts so it's safe to dispose of. We're not going to destroy a battery, we're going to charge a battery. We're going to set this up for a 6S LiPo. Just so you know what uh, chemistries, you've got lithium high voltage, so 4.35 volts per cell. Normal LiPo, which we're going to be doing, supports lithium ion chemistry. Lifey chemistry, lead acid battery of course, and nickel metal hydride and NICADs. But we are going to select LiPo. You can set the termination voltage per cell. So if you didn't want to set it at 4.2 volts, a lot of people are going lower for maximum battery health. You know, 4.15 is, is a popular voltage, termination voltage, but we're going to go 4.2. Keep it standard. Cells. I'm going to dial this to 6S. As you can see, you can go right up to 8. Well, we're doing 6S packs. Current, I'm going to be paracharging 6 packs, so we're going to go for the full 30 amps. And it will store the last 5 uh, current settings that you selected, but if the current you wanted to use wasn't in that uh, first 5 list, of your last five charge cycles, then you can scroll all the way through all the different currents 
all the way up to the maximum, which is 30 amps. And then we're just going to have to hit start. So let me just hook up my uh, batteries and we'll see how this works. Ready to rock. So I've got uh, six 6S uh, packs hooked up. Uh, these are 5,300 milliamp hours each. So we're going to be charging just under 1C at the full 30 uh, amp charge rate just to see if it's capable of doing it. Anyway, we're going to zoom into the ISDT Q8 Max charger so we can see what's going on. So when we first plug the, everything in, you can see the battery voltage, 23 volts, and all the cell voltages from 1 to 6, sitting anywhere from 3.1 all the way up to 3.83 you know, right at storage state. And that's what these packs are at, is storage. If you don't know much about uh, parallel charging, I have a separate page on my website about it. I'll link below in the description or up in the little card doodad. Advanced charging method. If you're uncertain what parallel charging is, that page will really help you out. So we're gonna go back into our task settings here, or our charge settings, which we've already gone through. We're gonna charge. We're doing a LiPo, 4.2 volts is our termination voltage. We're doing 6S packs, and we're charging at the maximum charge current of 30 amps. So we're gonna hit start. And there we go, it's ramping up the current. Fan's coming on. It's already up to 30 amps. It's showing us how many milliamp hours have been pumped into all these packs so far, already up to 100 really pumping the juice out there are the fans at pretty much full speed well, it's still ramping up warm air blowing out so yeah it's working hard right now and as we can see all the cell voltages in each branch are coming up already up to 3.87 3.88 and it's balancing the balancing current for each branch is up to 1.5 amps to keep them in balance proximity. And we can even check the uh, internal resistance by hitting the up or down. You can toggle between the cell voltage and the internal resistance of each cell. And this 59, don't know if you can see it, 59% or about 60%. So as it's charging, it's also showing the capacity of charge that's going back into the pack or packs. Just thought I'd show this other screen real quick. So we've got cell voltage, internal resistance, and then in the system info shows what the power supply voltage is, how many watts it's delivering. And then it's also showing how much it's outputting to the battery or batteries in this case in voltage and wattage as well. And of course the internal temperature of the unit. She's working hard. So it's done charging. 12.6 amp hours have gone in, almost 37 minutes. It's actually been um, balancing here. It's just putting a little bit of current through while the uh, cells all balance up, but uh, finished, no problem at all, looks good. I'm just gonna check the what the voltage is with a cell checker just to see if it's on the mark. Why aren't we reading anything here? Oh, because we got it plugged in backwards, that's why. So, saying the pack is 25.19 volts. Cell 1, 4.194, 199, 206, 198, 202, 196. Probably if I left it a little bit longer, it would have uh, balance them right up but not bad at all finishing up with our little ISDT Q8 Max RC charger review going from one extreme to the next charging a bunch of little micro packs here gonna be powering it with one of the big uh, 6s packs that we just charged and I'm also going to be charging my radio at the same time with the USB power output and this is completely independent of your main charging output. Totally separate. So we'll plug that into the radio here and get the radio charging. 
There we go. Green charge light is on. Probably can't see that. So our radio is charging up and we will hook up our little micro packs here. Oh, had to build a XT60 to four millimeter bullet adapter. So I just uh, soldered some four millimeter bullets onto the XT. I looked online, you can't really, there's a few of them, but uh, they're pretty rare. So yeah, you're probably gonna have to make one yourself. Super easy to make though, right? Or you can make a harness, or you could just have XT60 plugs on your charge harnesses. But most of us have a lot of banana plug charge harnesses already and paraboards, so this will solve that little issue. So we'll plug that in, negative to black, positive to red, and we're going to plug in our balance plug into the balance port here, and then we can just hook up all our little 2S packs for the, uh, this is for the OMP M1. So, is that showing up? I'm going to zoom in a bit here. So they're all in storage state right now. Let's get them charging. So we're going to go up to task, charge, yep, lipo, yep. I'm going to turn this down a bit. I'm going to go to 4.18. No reason, just thought I'd try it. 2S, it automatically detects that they're 2S, so you don't have to figure that out. And I'll charge current, we certainly don't want three amps. Assuming a 1C charge rate, these are all 350 milliamp hour packs. So 350 milliamp hours times six is what? Uh, 2.1 amps. There we go. 2.1, enter, start. And there we go. We're already at 2.1 amps. They're charging up nicely. Internal resistance and the actual system info. So really impressed with the Q8 Max. I would have to say the only thing I really dislike about it was how easy the display is to scratch. Uh, so that's of course somewhat uh, subjective. I would rather have some sort of an encoder wheel and a push button for the selection over these, but again, that's subjective. It's got a nice display, it's intuitive to use, very clear, easy to see. Do like the dark feature, that battery destroy feature is very cool. And just a really nice small form factor for such a powerful little charger and excellent price. You know, you get lots of features for just under a hundred dollars. And obviously the comparable charger to this, the one I was also looking at and considering was the iCharger X8. Very similar specifications. I do like the X8's display information better. You get more information on the display, but as far as bang for the buck, this uh, easily wins out. You know, the iCharger X8 is almost double the price of the ISDT Q8 Max. Now, is the Q8 Max going to stand up as long as uh, an eye charger? Well, we won't know that yet, but uh, so far very happy with it. So if you're considering uh, getting a ISDT Q8 Max, hopefully this uh, video will help you out in your decision, show you a little bit more about it, how it works, and if it's a charger you might be interested in or not. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next time. Happy charging.